over Katrina Morrison and New Zealand Sam Warner in the bike league. That was a short time ago at the 30k split. In the men's, uh, American Andrew Yoda has a 27 second lead over Kiwi Terenzo Bazzoni and German Jan Frodeno also at the 30k mark. I'm Alex Lukic at 7 past 8. news for those who hate washing dishes. Buy your new dream kitchen from Kitchen Studio and they'll give you a European manufactured award dishwasher with over $1,000 free. Your new kitchen. No interest or repayments until 2015 plus a free dishwasher for a limited time at Kitchen Studio. Terms and conditions apply. Go to kitchenstudio.co.nz A great new kitchen. Where do you go? Kitchen Studio. The way we insure houses has changed. It's now up to you as the owner to provide a cost for a rebuild if disaster strikes. The defaults I'm insured we had was way below the real cost to rebuild, almost $200,000 undervalued. Construction cost consultants are registered quantity surveyors. This month, a full rebuild assessment with a two-year guarantee is only $500. Text the word HOUSE to 244 or phone 0800 422258. Construction cost consultants, the rebuild cost specialists. Make your home a bug-free zone with Bug Juice, the only insect control paint additive. Rex, how easy is it to use Bug Juice? Bug Juice is easily mixed with nearly any paint or stain and comes with a handy mixing vessel. Does it affect the coating Bug Juice is mixed with? No, it will not affect the colour or drying time of the paint it is mixed with and it's completely odourless. Bugjuice.co.nz, insect control paint additive for indoor and outdoor use. Radio Live Weather. An updated Met Service forecast for your region until midnight. For all of the North Island, also Nelson, it'll be fine, but the high cloud will increase this evening. Very warm this afternoon about Gisborne and Hawke's Bay. Upper half of the North Island, it will turn to Custard, turning to Custard tomorrow. Marlborough and Canterbury, mainly fine with increasing high cloud and a few spots of rain in Canterbury. Buller, cloud increasing with drizzle developing late afternoon. Westland and Fiordland, the rain will spread from the south with heavy falls on the ranges, easing to a few light showers in Fiordland this afternoon and clearing in Westland, south of the glaciers this evening. Otago will have cloudy areas with isolated showers, some possibly heavy about eastern areas this afternoon, then clearing tonight. Southland, isolated showers becoming confined to the coast by this afternoon and the Chatham Islands will have cloudy periods. It is ten past eight on Radio Live. It's Sunday morning with Wallace Chapman. Good morning, uh, welcome to Sunday Mornings with myself, Wallace Chavin. It's lovely to be with you here. Uh, with you till 11 o'clock, uh, we're spending the hour from 10am till 11 talking about the issue of bullying, uh, uh, the psychology of bullying, not just uh, uh, physical bullying, but also cyber bullying. That's been certainly uh, in the news, one of the big issues of 2013, and uh, new laws um, uh, sort of set up to help uh, govern and regulate uh, how we bully and uh, what can, what we can do to uh, stamp it out. Uh, well, this hour, what are we talking about? We're talking about the forestry deaths, yet another forestry death, uh, and uh, protection orders. Does something more need to happen? This uh, terrible tragedy in Dunedin, St. Leonard's there, with uh, Edward Livingston uh, shooting both those children. But also we have uh, a huge week this in politics. And with us now we have Rodney Hyde. Rodney, welcome to the show. Good morning, Wallace. Good morning to you. And we have Salwan Manning in studio. Salwan, welcome. Thank you, Wallace. How are you this morning? Very good. Yeah, very good. The um, Well, let's start with... Um, with politics, uh, a big week in politics, and I see that uh, John Biscowen is to seek uh, the Epsom nomination and act leadership. I am today announcing, this is 16th of January, I am today announcing my intention to seek the Epsom nomination and leadership of the ACT Party in the 2014 election. Uh, well, Sowen, what do you reckon? Has John Biscowen got the goods? Well, I think it's a smart move for what it's worth, you know, and obviously I'm not a party insider like Rodney is, yeah. but, um, you know, I, I get the sense that where ACT is positioned uh, with the bank's fiasco moving out of yeah. the party, uh, that it needs a, at least some sort of uh, 
person who can carry it through to the next wave of of person who would lead or represent. I get the feeling that the credentials of the two people, particularly that lined up, that have had a lot of talk wrapped around them, um, are superb from the point of view of an act party candidate. David Seymour, Chris Simmons, is it? Yeah, I think uh, it is. Yeah. And um, the the uh, thing there, though, is that the the names of these other candidates are not household names to the wider public. Um, we can see from the wider public's point of view, you can see you know the, the quality of those candidates. Um, but you do need, I think, when you're transiting a party across from yes. a change, like we saw with the mainstream parties in the past, like Labor most That's recently, true. National in That's the early 2000s, producer. you need somebody who can mm. anchor it down, who is known, who has a track record yep. um, that can be relied on. And, and he's straight up and down, isn't he, John? He's, uh, you, 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 know, you know what you're getting here. Um, although, um, in terms of name recognition, some say, it's very closely associated with Lamingtons, oh, yeah. uh, most yeah. unfortunately. Well, people might, but these are exactly the same kind of uh, uh, reasons why last time I was on with Rodney and yourself, you know, we were obviously trying to prime Rodney to see if he was interested in that position because of um, the party and, you know, and irrespective producer. of what party it is, they always need somebody that has that institutional knowledge both inside and out to carry so, it through. Uh, Rodney, um, uh, John Viscow and the Honourable John Viscow, and he said he stood on a platform of maximum the party vote and our team achieved over 22 percent of the party votes in epsom uh, a record not broken since what do you reckon oh i think it's great and i know uh, the other contestants as mm. well and i think that's a very strong team mm. and it'll be up to the party to decide uh, who will be the epsom candidate producer. who'll be the leader but what they've clearly got is some good choices um Obviously, the big advantage that John's got is he's been in Parliament, he's been a minister, yeah. he's somewhat of a known quantity. Um, the advantage that uh, Jamie White and David Seymour have got is that they're fresh and they're young and they're new. Yeah. And that'll be what the party will be balancing up. Uh, and Rodney, I could, that's quite a, when, you think, when you put it like that, that's quite a tough choice, isn't it? Who to go for? Oh, it is a tough choice, actually. Um, and, you know, it's, as Selwyn says, it's one of the tragedies of politics is we tend to go for what we know yeah. and the fact that you know John Biscown's known for having a lamington on his head is hugely a plus because he's known um, and sometimes just to be known is enough to get you over the line yeah. Yeah. Like, like Richard Preble was uh, renowned for that egg on his yeah. face for a time, you know, and it certainly elevated. I, it, you know, he's producer. obviously going to always stand yeah. out whenever that clip was played on TV. And, and remember Don Brash with the um, dirt at Waitangi. Um, you know, that was a, a lead story, and it sort of shot him to prominence in a way. You're too. right, so actually. Yeah, you're all right. They, those those mm. negatives can turn into sour and um, uh, uh, public pluses. Yeah, well, over I guess, time. I guess they can. It didn't work for um, for Pansy Wong, of course. You know, bungee jumping off Sky Tower and things like that. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes you know it certainly can. Um, not not like we're not trying to obviously suggest that politicians should go out there and try and look for some sort of klutzy type of you know fall over. But um, the key thing here is you know to be serious about it. Is mm. I, I I'm for what it's worth. You know I'm obviously yeah, outside the act party's fold, but any party will look in this kind of situation for a trans kind of person, mm. as someone who can take it across and rebuild. I I, I just think you know from the act being um, you know based and and conceived and and developed on a reformist platform, irrespective of where it positioned itself on the on the left right axis, um, it, it represented something, and that was I, I, once. In my view, taken away from it um, with the takeover um, that the National Party mm. did of ACT. And it, it, to a degree, um, whatever they do from here seems to indicate that it is going to retake its party back. Mm. And that's to be fair, to be fair, so, and I don't think it was a, a, a National Party takeover. What happened was both John Banks and Don Brash wanted to stand and the National Party wouldn't have them. And so they decided this that their best option would be to producer. attempt to take over ACT. And I can promise you that the National Party was mortified by it. Mm. Interesting. So it was never never something that was conceived by the, the, you know, the National Party. It was actually two figures that the National Party had rejected for their own ranks. Th that might be so, but what happened was under Banks, we all can clearly see that it was 
ta- sure. the reformist base was taken away. There was an element of sure. social conservatism, and the libertarian base of ACT was was cast adrift. Um, and, and no, so that's absolutely right. But it wasn't, party, it wasn't a national party. It wasn't a national. They were producer. they were ex national party members who actually couldn't get into the national party, and um, who decided to take over the ACT party. It wasn't a national party plot. Well, um, in fact, mm. same as Labor. Labor and National have been very careful. It's a very interesting balance. You, mm. they, they're very careful to keep out of the third parties because you don't want to get entwined into their problems. Mm. However, you have a great interest um, that they keep together, particularly if you're in coalition with them. It's a this very, very delicate uh, balance that producer. Helen Clark and then John Key have had to manage. With, with respect to ACT, what appeared from the outside and I think probably will stack up in history terms is two national party individuals um, presented almost like a political corporate raid on another party. And in the end, um, they've failed, and it looks like you know, those loyal to the party are, are preparing mm. to take it back. Very, very interesting stuff. It is 18 minutes past 8 o'clock. We're with uh, Rodney Hyde and Sawa Mani. I'm going to pick up on something uh, that Richard Preble said actually producer. about John Key. Uh, after the ad break, the most popular Prime Minister in the history of polling uh, and indeed the most popular Prime Minister in the Western world. All that and more. We're back after the break. Be the first to know. The Trichometer Series, which measures light and heavy traffic across New Zealand, is at 3pm with the main program at 8. Most effective is Bunchu. 6 FM. John Key. Talking to the demonstration of near you. Producer. Just phone or visit online for opening hours. Stonewood Homes. Phone 0800 86 0000 or online at stonewood.co.nz. The home you deserve. This is Auckland's Radio Live 100.6 FM. It's Sunday morning with Wallace Chapman. 22 minutes past, I had talking of the issues across the week, and that uh, has got to include politics. And one thing really struck um, me between the eyes, really, and that was what Richard Preble was saying on the listener. Uh, I think it's this issue, uh, Rodney, that uh, he is the most uh, popular Prime Minister in the history of polling. Uh, that's going to make it very, very, whether it's true or not, but it's going to make it very, very difficult for uh, the Labour left coalition, isn't it? Yes, it's a shocking fact, and like you, uh, it hit me between the eyes when I read it, and I thought, actually, it is true. And it's almost like John Key is heading in for a third term, still in his honeymoon, which is extraordinary, because it's not that they haven't had their challenges, and it's not that he haven't had his problems, but he's actually sailed through them. Yeah, I mean the the problems beset one after the other. What are we t- just off the top of our heads? You've got this uh, uh, astonishing um, earthquake scenario, Sowen Manning. Uh, we have the Rena, we have the Pike, uh, re- uh, the Pike coal mine disaster, to just to name three. That the DSC, not, the, the G- GCSB, you name it. You name it. You name yeah, it's it. It's been a litany, um, really, in a sense. And I suppose those. So are what, what, are, what are we seeing here? Well, I think you know, you try and put ourselves producer. in the public shoes, and I. Think think that for whatever reason they have disengaged in large proportions from political discourse, from getting into it in a deep way, um, it seems that John Key does have that magic where he can be forgiven um, without seeking forgiveness, and that's an important part. And I think the other thing too is, is that it really does boil down to uh, good luck and timing. A lot of those really tough things uh, he tackled obviously outside an election year. Now, the, the, uh, the answers to this for the public, I think, to consider an alternative is very much that, that the alternative has to provide the mm. solutions to the problems that are beginning to impact on the population. Uh, if we go right back a similar time, around 1996, mm. when National was right in full swing, first MMP election, there was an expectation up in Auckland that Labour could actually retake that, and it seemed like... Like New mm. Zealand first was positioning to go with Labour, yeah. you're right, back yeah. then. But of course, Winston fell back on that producer. thing where he believed that, you know, an incumbent mm. has a certain right to to be listened to and to be worked with, you know, and obviously post-election. So, you know, and it went National New Zealand First Coalition. So back then, 
you know, it was the same thing. The, the, the Labour Party at that stage was almost a party, a government in waiting. It was almost there. It was certainly picking up policies that were the solutions to the problems of the day, like yeah. overcrowded housing and all of that. So the, the market rents was a policy of National Party was seen to be failing. Um, we're in that situation now where some of those problems that National has neglected are coming home to roost. But whether or not in this year mm-hmm. that, that concern amongst the public gets to a point where it looks it to the alternative and the alternative parties are ready, mm-hmm. as yet the question marks are around that. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Rodney, we have uh, the situation going into an election year where we have this, I mean, t- 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 to use the public relations cliche, the rock star economy, or at least uh, parts of the economy are doing very well. And business confidence, the shops are, are reporting a good trade, aren't they? They are, and people will stick with what they know. And they know John Key, and they sort of know what they think are his weaknesses. And they'll regard the Labour-Green coalition as something of an unknown quantity. And the big key that I was always taught in politics that you look at this Mm -hmm. far out from an election isn't the standing of the parties, but interestingly, whether people think New Zealand is heading in the right direction. And if they they think that the, and this works around the world, if they think that the country is heading in the right direction, that signals no change. And you can imagine that is actually a very insightful question to be asking uh, voters because they're not sort of switched into an election. But if their mood is that the country's heading in the right direction, yes. they're going to want to return the government. If they think that the country's heading in the wrong direction, they're looking for change. That's really, that's one, one, one of the things here, too, that can indicate whether or not it is heading in the right direction is that producer. test on how efficient John Key's lot are, not just the top five in national, yeah. but those that are further down. How is that talent pool shaping up? Is it short of talent? Are they, un- when they're under pressure, like Hikia Parata and others, Others, are they able to actually deliver the goods? Mm. You know, the other thing too is very much um, the, the values of the leadership. You know, are they in train with the common Kiwi f- sense of fairness and justice? You know, it's this, yeah. this kind of thing. Is he able to um, do the right thing? Like if a situation like the GCSB issue producer. develops again this year and John Key says, oh, yeah, OK, well, this this group, under this department underneath my governance yeah. has been doing something illegal, but it's OK, people, we're going to make it legal from here on. Is that in train with the Kiwi way? And it's that kind of thing that people can measure against, and that's where you get the twos and froze. You well, know, let, me, let me ask you straight then, um, Ronnie, is is John Key on course to become the most popular Prime Minister New Zealand has had? Uh, not only on course, he's already this achieved demonstration it. Of you stream All producer. right, wow. Okay, Sarah Manning, is John Key on course to become the most popular Prime Minister we've ever had? Well, how, how, how do you measure that? You know, some of the polls show that that's already the case, like Rodney says. In other ways, if you were measuring it from the point of view of performance, delivering to those that attach to the National Party that expect a certain result, they may be saying, he's certainly not popular with us. He hasn't delivered a satisfactory reform base. He hasn't, uh, he's been too moderate in some areas like the RMA for those that support the National Party's, uh, um, you know, uh, where they want it to go. So some would say no, you know, but it's if you're looking at the polls, well, he's been Held, hold up, held up the air for a long time. It's it's really quite the something, big, isn't it? The, That's big the, job challenge, the big challenge, Wallace and and so on to me is yeah. for national is who's going to be their support parties. And, you know, that's going to be tough. No matter, it's yeah. going to be a close election. That's going to be tough. And then the, the, the challenge for Labor, I think, mm. is their relationship with the Greens because they've got to pull votes across from national and those potential votes are going to be uncomfortable with the Greens and producer. the Greens' influence in the next government. Mm. And so interestingly, the Greens and the potential support parties for uh, National, they're going to be pivotal, in my view. Um, and I'd be interested to see as the year unfolds how yeah. how Labour and David Cunliffe handles the Greens. And, well, and just, New Zealand First is yeah, going to be just, National's um, partner here uh, if they're yeah. going to get over the line. And what that means for, for the uh, National Party's groups that are like the, the Sikh communities, the Asian communities, the, yeah, those from Southeast Asia, um, are they producer. going to be tolerant of that, knowing that in the next government it's much
likely to be New Zealand first and the national. Can I make a prediction well. here? I'll make a bold prediction. I reckon John Key's going to rule Winston out. Really? For those reasons? Yeah. For those immigrants? No, I think actually John Key, uh, here's my, I have no inside information on this, but I've been thinking about this producer. over Christmas. John Key's pretty smart. We all accept that. He's watched what Winston has done to other Prime Ministers. He's had a great run. I think he knows that if he went into government in a third term with Winston, it would wreck John Key um, and wreck his reputation. And I think he might be saying, I think the National Party would get into bed with Winston. But I, I, I don't believe John Key. Well, that that point's probably uh, it might have a bit of traction. But like we know, when when the when the uh, public dishes out the proportions, um, people like John Key will deal, and uh, we've seen that. That's a part. That's a how and you Winston's define betting it, on that, isn't he? Well, he is, but, but, in, the, in the sense that we, you know, it looks like Winston could very easily get over that five percent once again. His his MPs have been around for three years. They're more experienced. There's a more solid base. Um, but what he will possibly do there is obviously Winston's an unpredictable character too he may offer he may offer a confidence and supply but then you know on a legislation by legislation basis now whether or not a national party can actually tolerate that is Heavens above. Thing. well there you go you text us text live to 3920 what do you make of Rodney High's prediction there John Key will rule Winston out uh, we're also on Twitter at Radio Live NZ uh, and you can uh, email me radiolive.co.nz go to the Sunday show page and my email address is right there. We're back talking politics and the issues across the week with Sawa Manning and Rodney Hyde after the news update. News update. Making news this morning, more files are stranded. For a rebuild, if desired. Don't miss the chance. This is a demonstration product on of sir. Circular. Oh. Purple. Uh, what's... 36 minutes past. In four five nine. Remember, always read the label, take as directed, and if symptoms persist, see your health professional. Circular. 0800 459 459. This is Auckland's Radio Live. 100.6 FM. It's Sunday morning with Wallace Chapman. 36 minutes past 8 o'clock. Welcome to the show. Lovely to be with you. It's a wonderful Sunday morning. We're with Rodney Hyde and Sour Manny. And uh, yes, indeed, the, uh, what's... What could be bigger this week than the news that uh, Kim.com, the uh, internet tycoon, he has uh, started up a party. that He can't run himself because he's not a New Zealand citizen, but it's called the Internet Party. It's purple. Uh, it's uh, a, a, a smart logo. Uh, what is behind the Internet Party? And more uh, interestingly, Sowen, is he going to get in? And is he going to get the votes of the youth? Well, what, do you, what do you see when you see this Nidney party? Well, in, in that way, um, I think the ifs are on a probable part of the scale, if you like, uh, to get over some sort of 5%. And I say that because of uh, the turning on, if you like, of the interests of huge, huge numbers of new generation voters. Mm. Um, my view right at the front of this, Wallace, is that uh, on track record, the Kim.com party, if it got into Parliament, and there's the if again, mm. uh, would broker a deal producer. with the National Party. I do not see any evidence, apart from a few people that have been attached to it in the early stages, mm. that it would be on a centre-left trajectory. There is nothing there for dot .com to gain from. If you look at why he's gone into this, it's a dissatisfaction with the GCSB legislation himself becoming... So it's a personal say, issue with him. A personal this issue. Is, this is personal, but, as they but say. But also from the point of view of developing business interests in New Zealand and also having a presence of a progressive internet-based um, economy and market. All of those kind of things suggest <clears throat> that it's a huge challenge for a centre-left bloc that is preoccupied with more core social portfolio delivery. Um, with the dot-com thing, if you look at the people when Kim.com first arrived in New Zealand, who did he attach to? Who was he trying to befriend? It was John Banks, the more right-leaning people in the country. Um, you even see you know, the right. um, confirmation that Don Brash was asked his opinion up there at the dot com mansion most recently um at the yeah, most the important um, meeting producer. that held was held early in december where this document that floated around um was tabled around that table there were 
two individuals that are very, very closely aligned to the National Party and one in particular Good very Lord. closely aligned to the ACT Party in the past. Uh, so that's probably about as far as I should go with that. But one. you know more. Oh, no, certainly. And then so and you won't the say, people yeah. around there yeah. in a legal capacity were very much politically connected, um, but also with a legal yeah, expertise. And not with the, the left. Not producer. with the left at all. And the, there was the surprise, as I understand it, amongst those who felt that Kim.com's party would be positioning for a centre left group. Heavens above it. It um, all sounds very, very, very covert and. Uh, and discreet. Rodney, what are you hearing when you hear this? Uh, this is a uh, is Kim dot com perhaps uh, the true libertarian? I've got no idea. I've never met the guy, and I have some sympathy for his plight and the raid that occurred. Mm. Um, having said that, you know, New Zealand's hands are a bit tied with the extradition treaties we've we've signed, but he hasn't got a chance. Um, and I mean, it's fascinating to read about it. It's fascinating, you know, there's stories about it. But to me, the idea that you have a guy who's a foreign national um, facing serious charges, trying to attempt to the, the most powerful country on the planet, trying to extradite him, um, he's supposed to have his money all under under wraps. But there he is, with uh, living in a mansion with staff, and the idea that, that he is somehow going to set up producer. a political party in New Zealand, one for which he cannot stand. Uh, or even vote for and somehow manipulate uh, at a distance yeah, but um, to me is preposterous yeah, but you're that he would get over the 5%. You're, you're talking about uh, a man who hasn't just got name recognition like John Biscow and he's the most famous person in New Zealand right now. Um, he's uh, certainly a rock star in some cir circles and he has extraordinary sway with youth. He could bring someone over possibly like a hip-hop star, maybe even yeah, someone like Jay-Z or Kanye West. I don't know that, but imagine if that happened uh, in the lead-up to an election. I think what it, it, you know what you're hitting there is is a different type of politics. It's, you know, in New Zealand, we tend to. And I'm sure Rodney agrees with this. We tend to define our parties on a left-right axis, but there are all sorts of other things in play here. Right. It doesn't necessarily always, you know, should be measured in that way. For That's example, you know, how totalitarian are they? How libertarian are they? You mentioned is dot com the perfect libertarian. You know, and so all of these kind of things come into play. But if you look at the it's core purpose for there, are those things producer. that we mentioned just before, getting rid of the GCSB thing, getting rid of... The, if he is, if .com uh, also, I mean, if, if he is going to be successful there, it is mm. turning on and getting people that normally wouldn't vote to vote. Mm. And also the new generation who go in there and they think, oh, compared to this particular razzmatazz, the other parties look very pedestrian and mainstream. Yeah. So on a showbiz thing, it's a new generation, new way of looking at things, and I think it will be very, very interesting to see how successful he is by mid-year when the polls start to producer. register. That's when we could answer definitively uh, on what he has to do to actually get there. But you know, the 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 the, the start off, we haven't even seen the party formed officially yet. But we've seen clumsiness of which they've been trying to spin and say, oh, well, that's because of the silly um, policies that were put through by others earlier on. Mm. Um, all of that, 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 you know, they have to be more sophisticated, I think, to win that 5% yeah. they potentially could get there. What more can you You'd say? Have to, yeah. You'd have to say, too, so on, you know, that um, it requires a certain amount of skill and planning to do well in, in, mm. in a political campaign. And so far, they've had the easy bits and they've cocked it up at every step. Well, there's an element of perception around that which makes people that perhaps are outside of that group that are most easily persuaded to vote for it, they, the ones outside of that, the ones who have voted before, start to think, well, actually, I'm doing a bit of comparison here. Can I just get something straight before we move on? So, mm -hmm. are you are you suggesting that the internet party, or at least Kim.com, is getting is much of his internal advice producer. from the right? It's certainly that's where it's gravitated from. Um, if you look at, for example, um, his 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 big thing here is to square off against John Key. If he was, if Kim dot com was determined to make John Key squirm for the next three years, 
would he attach to the Labour and Green Party? I don't believe so. He would try to be the one that gives John Key the numbers and sit there and say, I want this reformed, this GCSB thing. Um, you got confidence and supply from us, but we're going to bleed you of legislation all the way through. John Key is the kind of guy that we've seen on track record, like, you know, with the Warner Brothers deal, etc., etc., where he will horse trade. And it might not necessarily be in his party's interests. Like it in some ways, arguably, things that he's agreed to on a big scale have not been, in my view and other people's views, in New Zealand's best interests. So is he going to sell out? Is he like that Leonard Cohen song, I'm your man, you know, and he's going to trade? And I think that is the big gamble that we are seeing developing under the dot com. Very, very interesting stuff. Uh, it is 8.44 here. Uh, there's a couple of other issues I want to talk about before the end. That's uh, protection orders. Uh, do we need to do more around those? It's very very sad uh, tragedy uh, in Dunedin and a little bit about uh, the smacking debate as well and Colin Craig you can text us here text your thoughts uh, text live to 3920 we're also on Twitter at Radio Live NZ Facebook of course as well we're back after the break the most entertaining and informative election coverage is right here in 2014 boasting the best political bro- Won't be beaten. City heating. 30% in. Can't see. At least for me on the. Because they, like me, know. $399. $199. Oh, All these are ex the Auckland Tennis Tournament, so they've only been used for a few hours. We have a limited number at very, very low prices. Advantage customer and game set and match for such a good offer. Magnus Benro, three great stores, Auckland White. New balls, please. This is Auckland's Radio Live, 100.6 FM. It's Sunday morning with Wallace Chapman. So, Colin, you're breaking the law now and smacking your children. This is, this is true. Y- you expect people to vote for you? Absolutely, because two-thirds of parents in this country are right now breaking the law because they, like me, know that this law is a stupid law. It has not done anything to curb the abuse of children in this country. In fact, our abuse statistics have continued to rise. Up, think about this, 30% increase since 2008 in child abuse. Now, that's not good enough. We've got to fix it. It's Wallace Chapman. And of course, that was the other big news, at least for me on the talk radio here. Um, no bigger topic than uh, whether or not we should uh, uh, re litigate the, um, the that so called anti smacking bill. Um, Rodney, what do you think? Do you think it's a bit of a uh, wasted effort for him um, bringing that up all over again after all these years? Oh, it's not a wasted effort because, you know, he's hoping to get votes and he sincerely believes it. I just don't think he'll be, no matter how well he does, he'll be able to get the votes across Parliament. Yeah. I've never I've never supported the anti-smacking legislation myself. I've always been opposed to it, but I can't see how a single party can change Parliament's mind producer. on it. So it's always been a conscience vote in the Parliament. Um, I can't imagine getting yourself into a position where you'd say I won't support you unless you change this law. Um, so, mm. you know, it's good for him perhaps to get votes. But, you know, there's a funny logic here, isn't there? I always thought it was stupid that you'd stop smacking and somehow you would, or you'd outlaw smacking and somehow you would um, prevent child abuse. But he's going the other way where mm. somehow him smacking his child is um, something child abuse. Oh, Rodney, um, Rodney I, I get worried because we agree on far too much stuff these days. And I was just going to say myself that, you know, the, the big problem he underscores there in that bit of a clip with Marcus Lush is he says child abuse is the problem on the rise and continues to rise. So his solution is clobbering them into shape, basically. And it just th- there's an irony there. You can see why John Key's lot must be very concerned with this kind of person being a potential I'd, I'd be concerned, eh? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's um, it's interesting, uh, so and also, in terms of a, when you talk about a pro- progressive society, I was really fascinated. We had a psychotherapist on this morning looking at the research across the world. And what we know in terms of smacking, Yale University, the American Psychological Association, um, smacking is really getting out of favour across the board. Well, you know, let, let's peel. I mean, it's a strange one in my, my mind. Yeah. You know, here is a group of 
New Zealand citizens, New Zealand permanent residents, whatever, people that are here in New Zealand that have no access to do anything about it themselves, to protect themselves. And we are sitting here again debating whether or not we should be able to clobber them if we so wish to as a, as a country. Uh, what, what would happen if we said and made a law saying, oh, well, you know, when the elderly get out of line, the younger can kind of go across and smack them into shape? Or if um, all people that were of a particular age group between 30 and 44 um, should be able to be smacked if they give someone a bit of lip at the pub. Um, but we seem to but think it's okay to do it to children. Um, now, surely in a sophisticated world we can do better than that. It's yes, interesting though, Sal, because, Abuse you know, we put a lot of words sir. behind that. I'm, I'm in this position now because I've got a nearly three-year-old hmm. and, um, you know, she misbehaves and she needs to be disciplined. Hmm, yeah. Now, I don't smack her. I couldn't smack a girl. Hmm. Um, I, I had a son and I used to, I smacked him probably half a dozen times in his life, very lightly on his bum, I never hurt him, mm. but um, I did smack him, but I don't think I could smack a girl, mm. um, and so what I do is we put uh, Liberty in the naughty corner mm. and mm. keep an eye on her for 10 minutes, and she hates it, this is a um, but in a funny a way, I, I do worry that sometimes that's more traumatising than a light smack on the bum. I think you're right, you know, yeah. and, I'm and, sure. But you're, not di- yeah. you're not disciplining, you're not disciplining, disciplining Nana, but yeah. what we do need, and, and this is where I agree with Colin Craig, we actually do need, you know, some discipline. We do need uh, to teach children the difference between right and wrong. And look, there's a current fad that thinks it can overturn thousands and thousands of years of evolution and says, oh, you know, let's cuddle and love our children and all the rest of it. This but don't you think they do need a discipline, that they do need producer. something well, like a naughty corner or I, something I, that I actually upsets what, them? I think what you've outlined there, though, Rodney, clearly is that you've found an alternative way through to make sure that there is there are boundaries in your child's life that you yeah. can oh. discipline in a way that you feel comfortable and probably is better for the child and um, you know like going back in all of our upbringings i guess everyone who's listening to this will be able to relate and take a point mm. on it and i just know in my own kind of experience that my mother never hit us never clobbered us never smacked us um but if you fell out of favor you thought oh that's just awful you know and you felt that inside producer. if I, I know that my personality if i was belted from or smacked and things like that it would build up a resistance a distance and it wouldn't have had any any benefits it right. would have had the account now i'm just talking in that yeah. in the personal sense because i don't want to invade the person uh, the privacy of others on this debate but there'll be everybody listening to this will know what works for them and what hasn't i think in some ways this this smacking thing is this from Colin Craig is this p- political uh, yeah because uh, w- wasn't it basically uh, it was the, the whole idea was just this removing the defensive of force yeah. so that, that was really what it was it was actually so, just a tiny piece of uh, so no one is going to be acting mm. illegally that gives us light tap yeah. on the bottom and this is mm. something that those who were legislating in favour of this including John Key were actually trying to actually um, underscore mm. and make clear there and it's and, and I think the um, you know the, the the wing that was going on or the line nanny state really had a big influence over developing that resistance to the law. Yeah. Hey, just uh, look at a, a, a bit of a word on um, Len Brown uh, and uh, the fact that this uh, gentleman McCready um, have succeeded in uh, filing a court action against him and his wife. What do you reckon that'll come of this, uh, Rodney? Uh, we're into the new year now. He's starting to. Um, make a, a couple of appearances, but uh, not going well so far. What do you what, what do you what do you predict will happen with Lim Brown? Well, you can't fight McCready off, obviously, given his past performances. But he hasn't got a prayer proving bribery and corruption in this, this case because no one would think it was producer. that, and, and the test for bribery and corruption is very high. I mean, the issue that you get at best is you know a failure to declare a conflict of interest. But what it does do, and this is what will be um, causing Len Brown trouble, is it keeps the story in the news, mm. and you'd ex- you would be hoping against hope that the Christmas break would put a line under it, yeah. and you'd come back, and it's all last year. But uh, McCready is making sure that it's still going this year.
And that's really what it's about, Sal, and it's just about continuing on the snowball of the story. Oh, it is in many respects, and the people that are politicised around this particular court action would suggest that. I think it comes down to that question. Is there um, a legal case to be answered? Well, there obviously is some sort of prima facie thing developing there. Would it be most likely that it would be an illegal act? No. But I think it's tweaked the interests of the legal academics in that when they get interested, and we've seen this on the television news where they're commenting on it. It is usually because there's a new interesting twist to the law in this particular way or creating a new piece of case law or precedence here on this type of thing. I think it'll come down, you know, my gut instinct, similar to Rodney's on this, it'll come down to um, a thing of, was it a, um, a, a, a thing that fell out of the legal what was legally right or was the ethical judgment of it poor and I firmly mm. believe that the ethics of it were completely flawed and should be focused on that should he go still say and I still say he should go because this kind of thing will bleed on he does appear to be a lame duck mare Kevin's above uh, look uh, finally um, uh, this uh, the, the, the tragic death in Dunedin of these uh, of these two children um, Edward Livingston uh, turned up uh, at his estranged wife's house that lands with a can of petrol and a shotgun using a secret key to get inside and shoot his children uh, and he shot them dead just before 10pm on Wednesday as Webb ran screaming for help it's to it's, it's almost disbelief really that something like this could happen um i'm just not sure rodney though whether um uh, more litigation producer. more protection orders or stronger protection orders would protect against anyone like this what do you reckon no well a guy with a gun and a can of petrol is hard to stop with mm-hmm. neighbors and you know he was appeared very determined but it is a enormous tragedy and i think quite possibly it's Protection orders is a big issue, but this is possibly more one about how we deal with psychiatric illness. Yeah, what do you reckon, Salon? Yeah, I think Rodney's right there too. Um, I, I do think that there should be more political um, discussion coming out of the Minister of Police on this. Right. And certainly, like from the Labour point of view, they should have Jacinda Ardern speaking specifically to these points to satisfy the public's kind of concern yes. that whether or not the police are equipped to act in a response, a very quick way, mm. an urgent response when things um, go awry. Mm. Down in Dunedin there it seems from what we've heard even before this came up that there is a reluctance for the police to really act in a forthright front line kind of way on concerns around protection orders. Now if that's the case it suggests that perhaps it's either one factor of targeted funding not mm. being right or mm. the bulk funding not being right and if that is the case there's a political issue here to be answered yeah um it just um it is briefly on that so uh, is it something also about um men falling really hard oh yeah it's a s- stupid thing of uh it, you know we do see men thinking that people are it's are their possessions mm. and we as men we've got to get over that nonsense yeah. you know it's just ridiculous hey um thanks we've got a lot of uh, texts here we'll uh, try and read producer. some out later on in the show but rodney hyde thanks for joining us this morning Thank you. It's great. And Sowen, same to you, Sowen Manning. You're welcome. Fantastic stuff. Great panel. And that'll be online, actually, in about half an hour's time. That'll be online on radiolive.co.nz. You'll be able to hear that and some interesting stuff around the Kim.com stuff this morning and a whole lot more. Uh, again, text live to 3920 if you want to um, voice your opinion. And you can email me at radiolive.co.nz. Go to the Sunday show page where all the interviews are up online from this morning already. Uh, and you can have your say right there. We're back after the break with the soundtrack to your life, a replay of Ian Grant. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer.